this one. Oh, dear. In Richard Neve's studio at Manchester University, yes. oh, I was hoping that something could be done with the shattered skull, yes. or we wouldn't have a face to rebuild. Yes. Richard gave the job of rebuilding our Saxon to Caroline Wilkinson, who soon noticed he had some very interesting facial features. Yes, you can really see, can't you, the fact that, I mean, the two eye sockets are mm. different heights, aren't they? This one's, right. this one's higher up than that one. Yeah, it's, it's got a, a full, a little tilt to the face all, all over, really. Yeah. We're very nearly at the finished muscle stage all over the face. Seen, seen how lopsided he is. You can see the nose heads off to the right hand side of the face. That, that would be the tip of the nose there. And the mouth is uh, wider on this side of the face than on this side of the face, so slightly off centre. Salisbury Museum, I met up with Saxon expert Mark Corney. I wanted to know more about the cemetery at Winterbourne Gunner and the people who might have been buried in it. I didn't realise there was quite such a big cemetery. Yes, there's something like 85 burials now known, which makes it the second largest Saxon cemetery in Wiltshire. But how do you know that the people buried in this cemetery are Saxons? Well, we don't know for sure that they're all necessarily Saxons. However, a number of the graves, the ones coloured red, have produced goods with the burials. So, I mean, you look at this object, for instance, this iron axe head. So what about the graves that haven't got any grave goods in them, then? Who are they? Well, this is the fascinating aspect of cemeteries of this period, because I think that we are probably looking at cemeteries that include a strong local British population, along with a few graves of the new force, the political and military force that are coming into the country on, in association with them. Accelerator Labs in Oxford, Paul Pettit has been carbon dating a tiny fragment of our man's bone. Had he come up with an age? Indeed, and I think you'll find it's good news. The, the results indicate that our individual died somewhere between 340 and 550 AD. Well, I suppose that's what we expected, but can you narrow it down any more than that? We can't very much, but as you can see, there's a bit of a peak here in the earlier range. Uh, fairly significantly taller than the others, so really I would say if I had to narrow it down, it's most likely our individual dates to somewhere about the first half of the 5th century AD. the garage was nearly finished. I'd brought the reconstructed head and was really looking forward to seeing Jill and Brian's reaction. Oh, I can't wait. It's nearly Christmas, so this is going to be an early Christmas present. All right, then. Just, just for you. Okay. <laughs> right, now, he's made of terracotta. It's a surprise for sort of this rather pink colour, but yes. there he is. Gosh. Are you all right? Oh, he's not a bit like I expected. Is he? No. What did I, you expect? I thought he'd be a rugged warrior type. Yeah. sort of person. No. He's not. He's quite a gentle no. yeah. looking person, isn't he? 